So in today's video, I'm going to be bringing you up to date on the latest stimulus check information. Everybody experts are now saying that next year's social security benefit increase will be larger than expected. Democrats are struggling to get their top priority bills passed through Congress without Republican support. So you want to be sure to stand to the end of the video to find out the most important stimulus news. Let's remember that Senate Democrats are stumbling into the end of the year with two of their biggest priorities, President Biden's spending bill and voting rights. Democrats enter the year facing high expectations about what they could accomplish, especially since they're the majority. But instead, Democrats are on the edge of wrapping up for the year, facing the painful reality of the limits of a one-vote majority. The setbacks fueled angst with the caucus and are poised to send Democrats back home to voters and into the 2022 midterm elections where Republicans are feeling increasingly confident. Some Democratic senators have even called a 50-50 majority problematic, adding that it sucks. Democrats won't back control of the Senate for the first time in six years in January of this year, but it's a narrow 50-50 majority that relies on Kamala Harris to break a tie. Democrats have faced stumbling blocks even when they can pass the filibuster. Now, Democrats did ship a $15 per hour minimum wage proposal out of the Christ Relief Bill, and progressive dreams of a $6 trillion climate bill has cut down to $2 trillion. Senator Durbin, for example, was asked about potential backlash from voters, arguing that the current rules of the Senate undermine the Democratic majority. The setbacks for Biden and some Democrats are coming from two fronts. Chuck Schumer also set an ambitious timeline for Democrats to pass Biden's Build Back Better plan before Christmas. He stuck with that timeline as he opened the Senate for the week on Monday, saying that Democrats were working hard to put the Senate in a position to get the legislation across the finish line before Christmas. But the negotiations hit a stumbling block, sparking frustration within the caucus. And according to retirement experts, another significant increase in Social Security benefits may be on the way next year. That's if inflation doesn't cool down. The Social Security Administration announced that there will be a cost of living increase to 5.9% in 2022, making the largest increase in almost 40 years. One expert even noted that the increase was calculated off on inflation from October 2022 to October 2021. And that's November's year-over-year -year inflation came in even higher at 6.8%. Now, the SA estimates that, they're, that without further action by Congress, the trust fund that pays retirement benefits will be depleted by 2033. By then, continuing tax income will cover just 76% of Social Security benefits for eligible retirees. Social Security 2100 is a plan to improve and increase benefits, protect against inflation, and strengthen the Social Security trust fund. It was created by the House and Ways Means Social Security, Social Security Chairman John Larson. However, even if the Social Security 2100 bill is passed by the House into this spring, it still faces hurdles in the Senate. So while Congress debates a bipartisan effort to bolster Social Security, the future finances of millions of seniors and disabled Americans are hanging in the balance. Thank you for your support, everybody. If you have any more questions about the fourth stimulus check, leave them in the comments below. Good afternoon. As we enter this Christmas and New Year, the bill I'm about to sign in law truly represents the spirit of the season, in my view season of hope and light, goodness and grace, and the power of unity and everyday Americans doing extraordinary things. That's accelerating access to critical therapies for ALS Act. That's what we're going to talk about today. ALS, known as Lou Gehrig's disease, attacks the nervous system and weakens the muscles, making it hard to lift up a spoon to eat or to take a step to walk. It leads to paralysis and ultimately leads to death than an average of two to five years of diagnosis. Since Lou Gehrig, a Hall of Famer from New York Yankees, announced his retirement from baseball in 1939 because of the disease, no cure has been found. Treatments are still limited, and the outcomes are still the same. That's 82 years with hundreds of thousands of lives lost. But today, we're finally closer than ever to new treatments and hopefully, hopefully, God willing, a cure. And it's because of the movement led by the patients and caregivers and members of Congress of both parties, many of whom are joining us today virtually. Patients like Brian Wallach and his wife, Sandra. They met in 2008 working in the New Hampshire primary for Barack Obama, believing in a movement of hope and change. Then they both worked for the Obama-Biden White House, driven by public service, beloved by colleagues, anchored by the love of family. In 2015, they became parents of their first child, Ella, 
In 2017, their second child, Naomi, was born. The entire world was in front of them, perhaps to run for elective office home in Illinois, at home in Illinois, or working for this White House, raising two beautiful daughters until everything changed. The coughs, the cramps, the twitches. Within days of welcoming baby Naomi, Brian was diagnosed with ALS at the age of 36 and given six months to live. That was four years ago. And Brian and Sondra are joining us today virtually. I say hi to you both because they turned their pain into purpose. They talked to doctors and researchers. They met more patients and families. They met with their elected leaders, Senators Durbin and Duckworth and Representative Quigley. And they rallied their family and friends and built another campaign powered by hope and change as well. They were bold. They were told that it would be hard, but they were stayed bold. And they'd be too many obstacles, they were told. But because of the nature of the disease, there wouldn't be enough time, they were told, I suspect. But they never gave up. They launched IMALS put a face on the movement, powered by the people. They partnered with patients like Dan Tate, who advocated for these issues for a long time as an ally and then as an ALS patient himself. They were joined by patients like Mayuri and uh, Sandy Morris, joined by caregivers like Deb Paust, Christina Thompson, excuse me, Christina Thompson, and uh, groups like ALS Association, the Muscular Dystrophy Association, that helped organize the community. A community that wrote countless letters and convened countless meetings with members of Congress and their staffs, many with their own personal connections to this terrible disease, to get this bill passed. I want to thank House Speaker Pelosi, Minority Leader McCarthy, Senate Majority Leader Schumer, and Minority Leader McConnell. Thank you to the members of the House, where it had 331 co-sponsors this bill, and it passed by a vote of 423 to 3, including the bill's lead sponsor, Mike Quigley, Democrat from Illinois, Jeff Fontenberry, Republican from Nebraska, and like many others, Anna Eshoo, Democrat from California, Brett Guthrie, Republican Kentucky, Jan Sandowski, from a Democrat from Illinois, Kathy McMorris, Republican from Washington State, Frank Pallone, Democrat from New Jersey, and members of the House ALO Caucus. And you're wondering why I'm saying whether well, Democrats or Republicans. To make the point, when we act together, we get things done, and this is totally, totally, totally a bipartisan effort. For the United States,